do you want? I've already talked to Christian. We're gonna we're gonna have the match thing. It's fine. What are you doing here? Apology, attorney at law. Okay. You probably want to shake my hand, Mr. Williams. All right. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Oh, the pleasure's all mine. Believe sure, me. Sure. Take, take, take a seat. Make yourself comfortable. What do you uh, What do you want? That it's not about what I want. It's about what I've accomplished. What do you mean? Think back. Crashing Edmonds interview. Breaking up the lion's den. Creating a revolution. Changing the inner heat. Why? Why? Corruption. Why have you been... Kalinowski. Why is... Why Why are you making Mike terrorize me? <laughs> what did I do? When a pit bull needs to eat, you let him eat. And let me tell you, he's been a fun pit bull. Fun to watch you squirm. But let me tell you something. It gets better. You can put this past year behind you. If you go into this tournament and you win, everything can go away. The letters, all the worry, it'll be gone. I just have to, that's all I have to do? I just have to win? All you have to do is win. Okay. But if you lose, This oh, will come crashing down. And uh, that would be kind of fun to see. It's up to you. You know, Polly, just to be clear, I don't like you. <laughs> No one does. I'm a lawyer. Ellison, Ethan Irwin, Dan Merle, Stacy Howard, and Draco McQueenie, Ben the Boss Bateman, Clark Wolf. The singles tournament begins. The winner of that entire tournament faces John the Outlaw Roca at the Spectacular. What a battle we're in for. Ethan Irwin. Remember that name. Ethan Irwin, I believe, could be a potential champion. He could be the next Merle. I might have even said that at one point. I mean, he's got those type of skills. Before Mara Kanopic came around, was a shoe in for Rookie of the Year. Now, Ethan won three straight matches. He won three straight, looked like he was going to get that title shot, but then he ran into the Android. The Android took him out of commission, and now Ethan is back in his first singles match since that loss to the Android. And how is he going to handle that loss? What late singer did Brad Pitt's character idolize in the movie Johnny Swade. Elvis. And your winner! Advancing to the next round, Ethan Big Time Irwin! I have to go through Merle, if I have to go through Roca, it, it's fine. I want that belt, I'm coming for it. I'll see you guys in New York. Dan had a rough start. Oh, no way! That's right! you Corruption has advanced to the next round. He's coming off a loss here, but he is determined. He wants to play for the belt, and if he did so, he would be playing against his fellow horseman, John Rowe. Never played in the Schmodown singles tournament before. I'm used to being the guy waiting for the person that's going to come out of the tournament. So this is a new experience for me, but the result's going to be the same. I'm going to be playing for that. And if I have to go through this guy, I love this guy. He's my teammate. He's a fellow horseman. But if I can get to the end of this tournament, all bets are off. And you're Dangerous! Dan Merle! I mean, 
Ethan Irwin followed me into retirement. I, I was retired and people were trying to scare me with Ethan Irwin. He is a beast. Uh, anyone beating him, that is quite the task. of the ultimate showdown and this could be an absolute this could be a title match this could be a main event anywhere what a semi-finals match we have today i'm christian harlow i'm mark elson you're right i would pay for a concert ticket to see these two gentlemen do anything sing dance and if you say movie trivia christian well that's actually the only thing of those three that they're probably good at well who are we talking about we're talking about the rookie sensation ethan big time Irwin, who is four and one this year got himself a victory over another rookie chance ellison no in a, famous people in a battle in an absolute battle in that first round but Ethan has been on a tear this season and this is just yet again his quest to become the first rookie to win a championship but in order to do that he's got to play someone who is that is very used to being in championship matches is very used to that a two-time champion in dangerous Dan Merle he reviews movies that feature famous people. Yeah, that's true. Dangerous Dan Merle, though, Mark, has been um, a staple of this league since it he's really. A legend. He's, he's a but. You, you, you can go ahead and chisel him in front of the building if you want Rushmore. to. You put him. You put him in a statue. He's on the Mount Rushmore, and now he faces. It's hard to say for Dan Merle that this might be his boldest test yet because he's faced so many greats right. over the years. There's two people on the table, just a few of them. But if you look at Ethan Irwin, a Rookie of the Year, when he comes in, you said four and one. Dan Possible. Merle. Possible. Facing somebody like this, right. it's it, it's a different kind of opponent than maybe Merle is used to seeing. Doesn't come in with a whole lot of fanfare. He has some little jokes under the under the cuff, but it's not the big bombast of Aroka. No, and I think that's why Jay Washington has entered the fray because their their relationship is is hysterical. Because Jerry is buddy cop. Yeah. Jay, Jay last week was full of insults with everybody that was in the post interviews, and Ethan's like. Please don't do that, because that's not what I do. Um, but they have now, it seems like they're working together, and they talked a lot, and there's a lot of talk there with the horsemen. There's a lot of talk with Ethan and Jay, and here you go. I had a great game in round one, but you know what? That game doesn't count for anything right now, because that score resets to zero. Right. It's round two, and it's time to get it done. There's a long road ahead of me. I can't look forward, and I sure as hell can't look backwards. The first rookie to hold the Movie Trivia Schmodown Singles Championship. You're looking at him, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. I'm really flattered with people saying, oh, Dan Merle's back, Dan Merle's back after the last game. I was very happy with my performance, but I didn't go anywhere. I yeah. I didn't anywhere. I'm the same person that I was uh, the, the two games ago, two years ago. Uh, it all comes down to the questions. Do you know the questions? Do you not know the questions? All I can do is put myself in the best position to answer the questions that I'm given and put my opponent in the worst position to answer the questions that they're given, and that's what I'm here to do today. Damn right. I'm just excited to be able to play against Dan. I've heard about him from, you know, the beginning of this season, and I'm, I'm really, frankly, just excited to sit at a table with him. Um, and, yeah, I do think it helps that, you know, beating Chance and just knowing what I know, I think, you know, I, I think I stand a, a pretty decent, uh, I don't use the word Chance again, but Chance. I've heard a lot about Ethan Irwin. Yeah. He, he emerged after I retired, and people I heard people saying, oh, he's the new Dan Merle, he's the new Dan Merle. Well, first of all, I don't see any championship belts on his shoulder yet. No. He's got to go through me, and he's got to go through this guy if he wants that belt on his shoulder. When I beat you, I want you to know I'm actually doing you a favor. It is so you don't have to play against Roca, one of the horse and one of your, your fellow teammates. I am trying to keep you from any division or discord that might occur. Um, so I just want you to know right now, no hard feelings. Ethan Irwin, people have been wanting this match. People have been requesting this match. People are saying that you're going to take me down, that I don't stand a chance against you in this match. I don't care who the favorite is. I don't care who the crowd favorite is. All I care about is putting my knowledge against your knowledge and let the best man win. 
This is a big time thing, a big time match, a big time player, and it's about to be a big time win. Dan Merrill, I respect you. I respect what you've done. I don't get why you have the two of them with you, but whatever, I respect you. But respect the fact you're about to lose. Dan is on a quest to play John Roker for the title. They, they're very respectful to one another. They want to play in that third match, whether it's, you know, hopefully that it's a spectacular. And Ethan Irwin, once again, making it clear he wants the championship. He wants to play. He wants to win it. That's why Ethan is, is here to play. But Ethan's been calling Dan out for a while now. And now he gets him. And is it going to be something that he gets to prove himself or be careful what you wish for? Yeah, and so many times with uh, matches like this where it feels pretty even, we say it's going to determine, it's going to be determined by what the wheel hits in round two. I don't think that's the case because they have such a wealth of knowledge in a variety of categories. This is going to come down to a five-point question, and it's going to go one way or the other, but I see this match definitely going the distance. What are some of the strengths of each competitor? Well, there's the tail of the tape. Ethan Irwin, who has Clint Eastwood movies. We, we're going to give him a strength on that one for sure. And Scott Eastwood movies. Action movies. Any questions about The Matrix? That's also a big strength. Uh, and then you got Dangerous Dan Merle, Spielberg movies, movie release dates, and and wearing shirts that not necessarily for his namesake, like Danger Mouse. I, I'm going to ruin that. That's, I'm going to ruin the reveal. Okay. I just ruined a reveal. All right. All Boy, right. what an exhilarating tale to tape that was. I thought so. It's early. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? Uh, I, I, I'm asking them. Oh, yeah. Now you I'm asking you. first. Cool. N and you? All the reactors? Good. Good. Are you going crazy with your popcorn and your beer on your couch? All right. Late to the party. Here we go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia schmoda. Good crowd here. Today. I like it. I like it. All right. Introducing first. Led to the ring by his manager, the Urban Gladiator, Jay Washington. With a record of four wins, one defeat, and one knockout. Give it up for Ethan, big time Irwin. There's Jay, and Jay now, Jay has a new leap. He's very, Jay has a new leap, as Ethan told him, you want to be on my side. Yeah, look at Ethan, look at Jay with all the love now. We've never seen Jay Washington so happy. 48 hours style relationship we have. Yeah, maybe this is working with Jay Washington, a new leap. It's, he just is nothing but smiles yeah. at Ethan Irwin, looking very confident here. He had a farmer's breakfast. Yeah, he doesn't want to lose his meal ticket, is what it is. <laughs> and his opponent, representing the five horsemen, with a record of eight wins, three defeats, and five knockouts. He is the former two-time movie trivia schmodown champion and the reigning Screen Junkies movie fights champion, Dangerous. Dan Murrow! There's the horseman. There's the oh champ. Boy. Champ's with him. And then Stay Dangerous Dan. I told you that Danger Mouse show. <laughs> you, you were not lying so with no your horrific attempted foreshadowing wow. during the tail of the tape. Here they come. Everybody's happy in the horseman. And Dan just gives a brief look over to Jay yeah. and Ethan Irwin. Yeah, Mark Riley shaking Ethan Irwin's hand. Will Roca follows suit and shows some sportsmanship. He did. He, he certainly did. does. He's, oh, oh, he didn't give it to Jay because he doesn't buy it. No one's buying what Jay's given. At Jay. Wow. It, Dan does it because that's who Dan Dan's is. Dan's just too classy to Yeah, do. that's who Dan is. Just Dan, too classy. Yeah, Dan was ready to throw and Jay out of Jay a window Washington last week. getting a little more screen time than any manager <laughs> has ever before. Now, Tom Dagnino still works here. <laughs> All right, with that, our competitors have hit the table. The semifinals are, are about to begin. And Mark Ellis, how do rule, the rules number one work? I got All it. All right, out. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Hell of an effort by Christian. It is early. The winner of this match will receive a $10 gift card to Cracker Barrel. Yeah. In round number one, you're going to hear eight questions from eight different movie categories. Each question is worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing available in round number one, although that will change in round number two. I want to remind each competitor of your three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the match. If you're not sure you heard a question correctly, you need to buy yourself some time. Use a JTE rule, in which case we will repeat the question up here at the answer desk. You also each have one challenge you can use at any point throughout the three rounds. Merle, Irwin, I feel pretty set, Christian. I do. 
<laughs> Merle, Irwin, Christian, I've done my job. I think it's time to start the match. Dan Merle, are you ready to go? Let's do this. Ethan. Always be closing. Then let's get ready to schmooda. All right. <laughs> Question one from the realm of action adventure. <clears throat> Which action film has the characters by the name of Hannibal, Face, B.A., and Murdoch? Good, good warm up for us here on the desk. That's good. <laughs> Just to make sure we knew how to ask questions oh, wait. correctly. Five, four, three, two, one. Dan. The A team. Yes, sir, Ethan. The A team. One, one. Uh, it's one. There we go. Pity the fool that did not get that question correctly. Your next is from the world of crime movies. These are crime movies. Members of a gang wear red leather vests as their key identifying clothing in what? 1979 crime film. I, did you like the 18? Five. That was all right. That Four. Was fine, right? Three. Two. No sequel, though. No. One. Pens down. Ethan. The Warriors. Yes, sir. Dan. I didn't know. It has put Mean Streets. Didn't it? have it. Okay. So Ethan Hell goes up guess, by one but point. Ethan takes yeah. the first lead. Okay. Next question. Dramas. Dramas. Which 1940 John Ford film starring Henry Fonda follows a poor Midwest family traveling to California after being forced off their land during the Great Depression? That sounds like the way I moved out to California to pursue my dream of stand-up comedy. I like you very much. You're a nice person. Feels like you're setting me up. I was talking to Rope. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Dan Merle. The Grapes of Wrath. Yes, it is. The Grapes of Wrath. Okay, so uh, two, They later three, made two. a book yep. out of that movie. <laughs> <laughs> your next question comes from the world of horror slash thriller. And your question is, in Fatal Attraction, the Christian Harloff story. Sorry, I read that wrong. In Fatal Attraction, <laughs> what does Alex boil in the pot on the stove? Movie scared a lot of people. Oh yeah, in the night. Oh yeah. Don't five, have four affairs. Extramarital no, affairs. Three. All right. Affairs Two, are five. One. <laughs> Extramarital. No. Pens down. Ethan. A rabbit. Yes. Dan. She was a bunny boiler. That's got <laughs> it. Okay. Four three. <laughs> Sorry, we can't accept bunny only rabbit. <laughs> That's four Dan three. gets the point. Ethan gets the point. It is still a one point game in favor of uh, in Fader, favor see? in favor of Ethan Irwin. Have some eggs. <laughs> we should always do this at nine a.m. Yeah. I know, right? Nine a.m. is solid, the best time. Solid gold. <laughs> Fantasy sci-fi is the next category. Who plays Zeus in 2010's Clash of the Titans? They thought I was going to say Die Hard 3. What is it? Hmm? Die Hard. Oh, right, right, right. right. Five, four, three, two, one. Dan Merle. Liam Neeson? Yes, it is. Ethan. Liam Neeson. Four, five. All right. Both Ethan. big fans of Ethan's, Clash of the Titans. Ethan is... F has five points, has not missed yet. Dan has four, only one point behind. Next question. All right, next question comes from the world of comedies. Reactors at home, do the laugh for me. Who played con artists Lawrence Jameson and Freddie Benson in Dirty Rotten Scoundrels? Just need the name of the two yeah. performers. Right. Don't need to necessarily assign it to five, the character. Four, they got it. Three, two, one. Ethan Irwin. Michael Caine and Steve Martin. Yes, it is. Dan. Steve Martin and Michael Caine. 6-5. Right, there we are. 6-5. Ethan still has not missed. And we get to our next question. <laughs> Comic book movies. Who plays Scott Pilgrim's sister, Stacy, in the graphic novel based Scott Pilgrim vs. the World? A lot of S sounds in that question. Yeah. Who plays Scott Pilgrim? <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Dan Merle. Aubrey Plaza? It's incorrect, Ethan. I had the same incorrect answer. Oh. Uh, <laughs> looking for Losers, a, get off the desk. Anna Kendrick, or uh, Anna Kendrick. Okay, but Ethan loses his perfect round there, and it is a one-point lead there, 6-5. And our last question, Mark. It is from the world of animated movies. Movies drawn by hand or on a computer. In this question, what 2009 animated film, based on a popular manga series, about a young robot features the voices of Freddie Highmore and Nicolas Cage? Ethan seems to have it. Dan's looking for I've it. Had a fair amount of uh, Freddie Highmore trivia recently. Yeah, five. No idea who he is. Four. I'm sure, he's, sure, he's sure he's a nice guy. Sure he's two. Uh, repeat the question. Sure, I can do that. What 2009 animated film based on a popular manga series about a young robot features the voices of Freddie Highmore and Nicolas Cage? Yes. Yeah, so anyway, what I'm saying is that if Freddie's watching, five, I love to four. 
break bread. Three, two, one. Ethan Irwin. Astro Boy. That is it. I had real steel. I had no okay, idea. Okay, Dan didn't have it. So Ethan Astro goes up. Boy. Ethan goes up by two there. It's wow. seven five as we approach the second round. And Dan Merle is down by two. Still easy to catch up here, depending on what happens in this wheel round. Mark, what is the rule? That's right. The dastardly Aubrey Plaza, the only thing keeping Ethan Irwin from a perfect round one. In round number two, it is the wheel round, the wheel of justice, doom, and the wheel that will seal your fates. Perhaps you're going to see opponents and spinners' choices, two of the 12 wedges on there. The other 10 come from a different part of the movie trivia showdown galaxy. Each category has four questions. Each question is worth two points. However, if you're not sure of the answer, you can ask us to provide multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which is the correct answer, at which point the value of the question goes down to one. Keep in mind, competitors, stealing is available in round number two. So if you miss your question, then your opponent can try to throw in the right answer and gain some valuable points. Christian, it is seven to five. Ethan, so Ethan, you will have first spin if you want to at the wheel. And this is a Patreon affiliated wheel because the slice that is sponsored is musicals. All right, Ethan, Thank you for modeling the wheel for us. <laughs> yes. And the wedge, Ethan. It is musicals. If Ethan hits musicals or Dan hits musicals, we will shout out the Patreon winner. Check out the movie trivia showdown Patreon today. Ethan, please spin from the wheel, not the peg. Thank you, sir. And uh, here we go. I think uh, I spin. I think Ethan's possibly got a gig uh, maybe taking over for Vanna White if she ever retires because Ethan he was really good yeah. at showing the wheel yeah. to the folks at home. Ethan looks confident right now. That's Ethan right. Looks pretty confident. Looks Ethan calm. looks nice. I believe that shirt uh -oh. is Brooks Brothers. Uh-oh. And it's dramas. 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 Does Ethan like dramas or, or does he want to spin he, something he else? shooting for something else? He's weighing it like Lady Justice. <laughs> What's he looking at? What's He's gonna go for dramas. He's gonna go for dramas. He's gonna go for dramas. This is could be vague. Could could hit it. We'll he's been. We'll see how this goes. Ethan Great. has been go lights out in round two. All right, Ethan. In the world of dramas, you're gonna have four questions. Great. Your first one is, what famed screenwriter co-wrote the screenplay for 2011's Moneyball alongside Stephen Zalian? Aaron Sorkin. Two points for Ethan Irwin. All right, all right. All right. Much to Jay Washington's delight. Your next question. In Field of Dreams, which Hall of Fame baseball player was told to stick it by Shoeless Joe and the others because they couldn't stand him when he was alive? Multiple choice. Is it A, Babe Ruth, B, Mickey Mantle, C, Ty Cobb, or D, Rogers Hornsby? C. C is correct. Ty Cobb. So we told him to stick it. <laughs> that classic creepy Ray Liotta laugh. <laughs> Three points so far in this round, Ethan. You did need multiple choice for that one. Your penultimate question in round number two in the world of dramas. Who plays the lead Mac Phillips in the 2017 Christian drama The Shack? Sam Worthington. He is Sam Worthington. That's true. That's how big of a Clash of the Titans fan Ooh. Ethan Irwin is. He remembered it. All right, two points for that one. And your last question, Ethan. In the film Witness, what does Eli see Rachel and John doing in the barn that might cause her to be shunned? Five. Multiple choice again. Is it A, kissing, B, singing, C, drinking, or D, dancing? D. They were dancing One in the point. barn, and that is Ethan. not cool. All right, Some so corners of the Amish community. Ethan gets himself an eight-point lead here over Dangerous Dan Merle. Had to go to multiple so choice twice, but gets himself six points, and now Dan is H up. H is O. That's right. Dan's <laughs> going to go spin now, Christian. He needs a perfect round two in order to tie Ethan, but... Like we said at the top of the show, there's three rounds here, and three rounds. it's you want to be within that five-point range in yeah. case Ethan trips up somewhere in round and three. Dan was having a rough start with the wheel this season, but against Stacey Howard, it was nice to him, and he was lights out in that last match. But it's going away. Dan Merle, you know you're uh -oh. familiar Look with at the this. 2000s. Look at this. Look Is at this. this. Be Spinner's choice. Spinner's yes. choice. Spinner's Dan choice. Merle hits Spinner's choice. The wheel is starting to come back right. on Dan's side. Does he want to go with the 2000s? What's he looking at? Familiar with? Does he, he want to go with at? Disney films? Maybe video game movies. We're going to see. He's thinking. Going to need an answer here. Considering. Considering. Guys, it's 9 a.m. Just give him a second. Uh, let's go with the... Uh, let's go with Oscar. 
Yeah. Oscar movies it is. Oscar movies. All right, I got you. Dan right. Merle looking to tie up Ethan. Let's see here. what happens. Oscar movies. Oscar movies. Could, could have been a bad choice. Let's see. All right. Movies that have won Oscar. Suicide yeah. Squad is in play. Yeah, that's true. All right, Dan, here you go. For what mm -hmm. movie did Jack Nicholson receive his first Oscar nomination for Best Actor? Best Actor. Five, four, three, two. Chinatown. It's incorrect for the steal. One flew over the cuckoo's nest. It's incorrect. Five easy, five easy pieces was the answer five there. Five easy pieces. Yes. All right. Here's All right. <laughs> next question. Here you go. How many Oscars has Emma Stone been nominated for? Multiple choice. A, two, B, one, C, three, D, five. Two. Five. Two is correct for one point. Okay. Big point. You, didn't want to, you don't want to let a steal go to Ethan at this yeah. point of the game. Question three. Who was the first African-American performer to win an Academy Award? Hattie McDaniel. Two points. Yeah. That's correct. Big get from 1939. Gone with the wind. All right. What was your final question? What was the first hip hop slash rap song to win best original song at the Oscars? Five, four, three. Lose yourself. That is correct. Yeah. Thirteen That's ten. Right. So Dan. But does he know the artist, Christian? <laughs> All right, so Dan gets himself within three. It's within three points as we get into the third round. And still, he, he, there was a deficit, a big deficit there. It is only a three-point deficit now. Anything can happen as we get into round three. That's How right. Round work? number three. Dan Merle correctly guessing that Lose Yourself was by Sir Mix-a-Lot. In round number three, you're going to hear three questions. If we make it that far, the reason for that being is that the point values of the questions continue to rise as we get deeper and deeper into the round. Your first question is worth two points. Your next one is worth three points. Your last one, if we make it that far, five point question, and that will determine the match unless we go into sudden death. How do we determine those questions? Thanks to you. You're gonna each give us three numbers. These numbers can range from one to 20. Ethan, you are still enjoying a three point advantage over Dangerous Dan Merle, so we'll take your numbers first. 12, two, and three. 12, two, and three for big time and Dangerous Dan. Uh, 1, 8, and 16. 1, 8, and 16 for the former two-time champ. As we start with Dangerous Dan Merle, who will try to avoid a TKO here. He has two JTEs left and one challenge remaining. All right, Dan, you chose category number one for your first category. That's the realm of romance. Uh-oh. Which funny man took a dramatic turn as a troubled salesman, Barry Egan, in Punch Drunk Love? Adam Sandler. Yeah. For two points. That's correct. You got to love when they call comedians funny men. Yep. All right. That eliminates us now. He's going to try to take the lead over Ethan, forcing Ethan to start to hit some questions. Dan, category eight is what you chose for your second category here. It's westerns. That's uh -oh. westerns. Who played Dirty Steve in 1988's Young Guns? I mean, it's pick them at this point. Um, who looks like a dirty Steve? <laughs> Five. Let's go with Emilio Estevez. Looking for Dermot Maroney. Yeah. Dermot Maroney. Okay, so now Dan Dermot has Maroney. to hit his five. Dan has to hit his five. If he hits his five, it bounces back to Irwin. However, if he misses, Ethan will advance via TKO and play the winner of Andraco and Clark, and Dan will have to play the loser of that match. Here we go. All right, Dan, 16 was what you chose to force it back to Ethan. Directors. Directors. Here you go. Who directed 2012's The Born Legacy, starring Jeremy Renner? Five, four, three, two, yeah, uh, one. Repeat. Okay, here's number two. Who directed 2012's The Bourne Legacy, starring Jeremy Renner? Five, four, three, two. Congratulations, Ethan. Paul Greengrass. 
and your winner, by way of technical knockout, Ethan Big Time Irwin. The answer was Tony Gilroy. Tony Gilroy was the answer. Tony so Gilroy, tough. Five points. That was tough. There. That was tough, and it just went. It just went Ethan's way. But Dan Merle is not out yet. He will face either Clark or Andrejko, depending on who loses that match, for a chance to get the number one contender match at the Schmodown Spectacular. And Ethan Irwin will now face the winner of said matchup between Andrejko and Clark Wolf. But Ethan Irwin now stands high at five and one with two knockouts here. And he is going to be talking to Roxy Stryer, as will Dan Merle. Let's get to that right now. Hey guys, I'm Roxy Stryer, and we are back with your winner, Ethan Irwin, <sighs> defeating the two-time champion. You've got to be feeling really good right now. Uh, I don't even know what I feel. It is a, it is a, uh, it is a roiling cauldron of emotion. Because uh, look, he is incredible, that guy. And so I, to be able to do this, look again. I'm going to say half of it has to do with the fact that it's, we did this at 9 a.m., you guys. So it is. That's that's definitely that played a, a part. But yeah, no, I feel I feel great. It's I it's. You Look, to be able to take on the best is incredibly exciting for me. Even more excited than you, I would say, is Jay Washington over here, who's actually doing a little jig. You seem pretty happy. <laughs> I just want to give it out to the God who's the head of my life, the pastor, my mom, and my agent, and everybody. I want to thank God in heaven and Christian Hollow and Ethan Irwin. He is amazing. He beat an amazing opponent in Dan Merle. He is a phenomenal opponent who had two great competitors along his side in John Roca and Mark Riley. And look, Ethan and Baskin at his glory. We're in the winner's circle. This is beautiful. We're going to the spectacular. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. All very nice things to say about it, you. It a, look, I am a nice person. Listen, I feel like everybody, Ethan has brought out the best in me. You get it? You see the smile? I'm happy to be here. And we did have a little talk since the last time. And I think I think we understand each other. We about Yeah. Do. No. I'm and, and it's great. So much nice to everybody. Okay, okay. You were playing from a, a winning stance the entire game. You were never down. Was there any point you were a little nervous? Uh, only only really right at the uh, right at the end, you know. I mean, he got some tough questions, but look, I've seen him pull it out before, so it was yeah, I, I had a I had a bit of a lead, but I didn't I wasn't sure if it was going to be enough. If you had to pick, who would you rather play now, Draco or Clark? Look, uh, I tell you what, I, I said this in the pre-interview. Clark is terrifying. Her the depth and and breadth of her knowledge is uh, is I it's it's stultifying. I don't I I, I, just, I really don't want to have to face her. And frankly, I'd like to go up against Andreco as a little bit of a rematch, a little bit of payback, a little bit of redemption. But either way it goes, it's going to be a beautiful competition, a fair and square and honest competitive, competitive competition between two amazing competitors. It will be beautiful. It will be lights and angels and flowers and everything that Christian <laughs> Harloff has wanted this league to become so nice. And, and there will be handshakes, right? Thank you for that, Jay. Yes. Thank you. Handshakes. No matter what, you are going to the spectacular now. So... I'm excited. Uh, uh, that must be something that you've been dreaming of. What does that mean to you that you'll be there? Uh, it's great. I mean, again, to be in the presence of all those incredible, incredible competitors, to to be able to, you know, to, to do this in front of everybody. I've only been doing this for a season, but I've been watching for years. So, yeah, to actually be able to be a part of it, I, I, I couldn't be happier. Well, congratulations. Thank you. To you too, Jay. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> the real winner here today, guys. Am I right? Are we gonna, you wanna shake my hand? He wants to shake your hand. Let's do this, we did it, we did it, we did it, we did it, bro. We did it. Hey guys, Roxy Stryer here, and I am standing with Dan Merle and some of his horsemen. Dan, mm -hmm. obviously not the way you wanted this one to go, but you fought very hard. Talk to me about the choice to pick Oscars, because you had a lot of strengths on that wheel, and you had yeah. Spinner's Choice. It was between a couple of ones, and, uh, you know, Oscars in retrospect, uh, maybe that wasn't the best pick for me. I also, tactically, I was playing from behind the Jack Nicholson question. Um, if the score were different, I think I might have gone to multiple choice. I was fairly sure of that answer, at least I thought there's a good chance that was right, so I took the chance and guessed. Uh, turns out that was not the right case. Ethan got those points and that really kind of wrote the book on the game, but you know, the, the, it's not just answering questions. Sometimes you gotta look at the score, you gotta take some risks, and yeah. uh, I took a, a bit of a risk on that category, took a bit of a risk in some of my choices, and uh, they didn't quite pay off, but that's the game. You know, you gotta, sometimes you gotta, you risk, sometimes those risks pay off, sometimes they don't. That's what the people like about you. You are a risk taker, and you're not out of this yet, because whoever loses between Andreco and Clark 
Clark, you get to play for a chance to be the number one contender. So who would you actually rather play in that? that that's a pick em for me. Neither one, of, neither one of those competitors are one that I think anybody would like to be sitting on the other side of the table with. You've got a singles cha uh, sorry, a team champion in Clark uh, who has done a lot of great things in singles. I played her once. That was a long time ago. I was a different player. She was a different player. Uh, the, I would not look at records as far as Clark goes. And then Mark Andreco, that's a guy that has played for the title that uh, the last time I sat at a table with Mark Andreco, he was waving bye-bye to me and three of the other people that a lot of people say are, are, are among the best to play this game. So there's not a good choice among those. I just have to wait for that game to play out and see who it's going to be. Who would you guys rather see Dan play? Uh, whoever Dan plays, Dan's going to come prepared and he's going to be great. Look, he's a horseman. He knows what's up. He's brought it before. He's a two-time champion. Anybody who doubts him is crazy. This was a tough game. Ethan Irwin is a fantastic player. It's no shame in this loss. It went toe-to-toe. -to -toe, just didn't work out today. Whoever he plays, it'll be a great match. Yeah, I echo that. This is the game. You played a hell of a one, man. You played a hell of a game, mm -hmm. and now you got another opponent coming up. It's anybody's game. I just, I feel bad for Jay Washington. What's it like yeah. to, what's it like to put together a stable, have them all lose, then get handed an actual good player, right. and then try to take credit for it? That's a sad, sad it's thing. A, it's amazing. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I put my stable together. Who's in the finals right here for the tag team championship? Who's yeah. the champion? Me. Who's going to be back in the number one in the number one contender spot? This man right here. Right. I put a stable together that works. I think he's laughing straight to the bank right now, though. What bank is that? <laughs> the Schmodown Bank. Yeah. What do you guys think He's about overdrawn on the Schmodown Bank? Let oh, me tell you. Hey. Ooh. What do you guys think about Irwin's shots now? Do you think that he has a chance of taking this all the way? I mean, listen. This guy's a great player, but I sitting across the table from him, it, it, I was not sitting there answering in my head a lot of the questions that he got going like, oh, I would have gotten that. He was answering a lot of stuff that I didn't know. Obviously, he answered a lot more stuff that I didn't know uh, when the points mattered. So I think if Ethan makes it to, to play this guy, John, you know, I'll always be in your corner. But, and I think you know this, uh, you're gonna have your hands full. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well listen, 9 a.m., 4 a.m., 2 p.m., 1 p.m., 6 o'clock, I don't give a crap what time it is, Ethan, you better bring it, because I'm sure gonna be awake for it. So I don't care what crap you're talking, I don't care, Jay Washington in your corner, handle your business in the final, then we'll see what you got, big man. I've seen many challengers come and many challengers go, but this is a two-time champion you're talking to, so get ready. I want to thank John for letting me be in his post-game interview, too. That's really nice of you. <laughs> and on, on that note, Dan, great job today, though. You you are a two-time yes. champion as well. My season's not over. And that is true. My season's not over. If I don't get to play for the belt this year, that's fine. I still have another shot to play for it uh, next season. That's what I'm ready for. Uh, I got to prep for a, a, a terrific opponent. I still have a chance. Season's not done, and I'm still ready to play. How can yeah. you not love Dan Merle? Am I right? Right. right. The greatest of all time. Thank you so much, Dad, and the rest of the horsemen. All right, as we get, obviously look, Dan. Dan was a little upset there, but too he was. He he said, look, it was it. It just didn't go his way. He's ready to play again, and so is Ethan. Ethan is ready to go, and Jay Washington still playing this uh, character. I'm gonna say character of nice person. Yeah, I mean, look, I give all the credit to Jay Washington because did Ethan know some questions? Oh, yeah. Sure. This is really Jay Washington's match yeah, that yeah. he won, in my opinion. Ethan is just kind oh. of a hanger on to the great managerial skills That's of what it Jay Washington. That's what it is. Ethan uh, or Jay Washington is riding high right now because yes, he, he, is. he got himself a, like I said before, he's got a meal ticket and he got himself right into the finals because it is guaranteed now, it is guaranteed that Ethan will be in the Schmodown Spectacular mm -hmm. because if he wins the whole tournament against either Clark or Andreco, he plays Roca for the championship. Right. But if he loses, then he will automatically be in the number one contender match. So now the question is between the three remaining cont uh, contenders here, between Dan Merle, uh, and Draco and Wolf, who will be in the title match or who will be in the number one contender match? We will find out very, very soon as this thing wraps up. Yeah, and we're going to know. Hopefully, Ethan's schedule is free to compete in the Schmodown Spectacular. He's got a lot of famous people in that Blackberry of his, so we'll see if he can wrangle a few hours to come in and join us back here at the studio. And you can wrangle up as much free time as you want to watch the movie trivia Schmodown ad nauseum. Hey, accentuate it by joining the Patreon, the movie trivia Schmodown Patreon. Check out which tier is right for you today. Also, check out the Schmodown Rundown, wherever you get your podcasts, and the Movie Trivia Schmodown Facebook page.
And also remember, get your tickets on SchmodownLive.com for January 26th in New York, the season premiere. Whoever the champion is by the end of the Spectacular, they will be playing whoever wins the number one contender match at the Spectacular, and that's your main event. Make sure you check it out. Like Mark said, check out the Schmodown Rundown, the Facebook group. Do all of it and join Patreon today. Thank you for all of you guys who helped fund this thing in the first place. For Mark Ellis, myself, Ethan Irwin, Dan Merle, and the whole damn crew, thank you and we'll see you next time what's up schmodown fans frank here and it is time for your schmodown breakdown and it's the first semifinal match of the tournament and former champion dan merle fell behind quickly seven to five to rookie sensation ethan irwin as we move into the second round, Ethan lands on drama and answers all four questions correct for six points. So far this season, Ethan has earned all but five points in his six matches on top of missing just one question in second round play this season. As for Dan, he had an ounce of luck on his side as he spun Spinner's Choice. This is the third time in his career he has landed on Spinner's and both previous times he's opted for comic book movies. But here in this match, he asks for Oscars and goes 3 of 4 for 5 points. Now going into the final round, history has shown us that players who have a lead at this point in tournament matches have won 80% of the time. With Dan trailing by 3 points, he was successful in his 2-point attempt, but after that he was unable to answer either his 3 or 5-pointer, and Ethan Irwin earns a huge victory by TKO to send him to the tournament final. Inside the numbers for this match, it was a steep drop off for Merle compared to his last match. He goes 9 of 15 for 60% correct. That's nearly 20% below his career average, and this is the second or as accurate match of his career. As for Ethan Irwin, he answered 11 of 13 for an accuracy rate of 85%. Right now, his career accuracy rate trails Rachel Cushing by 3% for the highest accuracy rate of all time. If you want to find out other stats about this match and from around the league, check out SD Rundown Stats on Twitter. And don't forget to check out the Schmidt on a Rundown every Saturday on the Collider Podcast Network on YouTube and the Collider Factory Podcast Feed. This has been your Schmo Down Breakdown. How's it going, guys? If you didn't know about the Patreon, you guys have a chance to support the Schmodown. Now, myself, Mark Ellis, we've taken over the production. Basically, you guys have 16 tiers to choose from. We're trying to give back to the fans. Go and check it out right there. If you want to support the Schmodown by becoming a patron today, go ahead and do it. Cannot thank you guys enough for all the support you've given us. And, yeah, there's some really crazy tiers in there. I'd love to get your opinions on it. Now, go enjoy the match. Go do it. It's a good match, for God's sakes.